Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Bless the Lord this morning. Um, let's just start praying in the spirit as we wait for Pastor Bahati to join us. Let's get our spirits ready this morning and unmute. Let's pray together. you are welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, all of you in my heart. Everything on me, the new year, everything in our children, the new everything on us. I should have wanted to shut the push of my side. There's a new day that I made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. my children, my Father God Almighty, and Joanne Teacher, Jeremiah, and all the men of the sex of the thousand generation. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for you, who are anointed with them. Father God Almighty, do not lack anything. I shall show my thank you to you as well. In Jesus' mighty name, do not let no harm, no danger, no deception, no accident, 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 Father <laughs> 
for the chakras of the world. Father, they don't have any choice. They don't have any choice in Jesus' mighty name. Jeremiah will listen. He will be great in school. He will have a wonderful day today. He will work hard in this you should have a great day. No one is also having a great day. Father God Almighty, I pray that my daughter comes out from the Iran, different person, filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, spread the hell out of her. And the hell out of her. Father, you will join us. As a, as a bridge where million will be so so of your kingdom. Father God Almighty, give her a good husband. Uh, with a beautiful children in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. I am ready to shut up. Yes, I am ready to shut up. Hello, praise the name of the living God. Um, I'm sorry, I joined a little bit late because of the time difference. I don't, I didn't know that this is the time. So I joined a little bit late. I thought it would be 11, but I think the Holy Spirit who told me to just get ready quickly. Yeah, so I'm sorry for being a little bit late. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we glorify you, we honor you, and we praise you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. The grace, again, as Midian women, to be in your holy presence. We pray, Lord, and we pray that you may minister to us according to your will. And let that which is in your heart be fulfilled for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you so much. So we thank God for another time. Just a few minutes, like 30 minutes ago, I was meditating the word. And the spirit of God took me somewhere in the book of Acts. So he took me there and I was meditating on what the Lord is, was talking to me. But uh, yesterday night, before we went to sleep, I was just looking at somewhere, I saw um, people in class and the children are in class and one mother came in and the teacher was hanging the LGBT flag. A flag on the on the board. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like they were learning. It was a history. They, he, she was teaching history. I don't know. She, he, I don't know history but she hung on though that flag on the wall so the mother of one of the students came in and he ripped off the flag and after ripping it off and she was like why are you interfering so the, the woman was like we we are paying you tax to teach our kids history but the, what you're teaching is not history i just want to say something that um the enemy is serious and is bold. Is serious and is bold to do whatever he wants to do. 
while the children of God are afraid, they are coarse and they, they don't have courage. For someone to just sneak in with a flag and hang it in glass, imagine how many Christian teachers can enter with their Bible, just a Bible, and put it there and speak about it. And this, this thing, because now, even when we are speaking, speaking, this thing of making like, uh, I don't care, I don't care. Someone else maybe might speak and so forth. It's costing us a lot in many things. I'm sorry. The enemy is entering and taking over many special things, many powerful things. And the church is passive. Few have boldness to speak about Jesus. It may be for yesterday we had a prayer walk here in London. I mean, in London now in Sheffield. So we had a prayer walk in London and we were walking. And when we reached at um, the palace, we, we, that's where we winded up our prayer walk and the Lord gave us a word. And so we finished up there. And after finishing, we were just worshiping. We started slowly. Boldness came in. We started worshiping and praising God. The roundabout, and after finishing singing, Pink Hall, we are clapping and they were joining. And when it was time for prayer, they say, I said, if you want to join us, come, come, come. People came and joined the prayer. But also, I could see one of our brother, one of our brother, Brother Moses and Sister Denise, were going around. They were also talking to some people, and people were listening. What does it show? It shows that uh, um, the harvest is ready. And I don't know where are the Christians, I don't know. The harvest is ready. People are waiting for someone and go and tell them about Jesus. And where are the Children of God, where the church? It is passive. It is sleeping somewhere. I was about to say when I saw Mickey, I was about to say South Africans, they have to pray more than anyone. Because when you just enter at the entrance, you find South Africa, they are laid there. That means, I don't want to say more, but you will understand. The church has to work up. Things are not the way we think that they are. So the Lord gave me this Bible verse from the book of Acts. I hope you, you, you hold on to your Bible. I hope you have your Bible. Now it's time to get courage. Walk with your Bible. Walk with it. You see, my daughter, Pauli, she's just walking everywhere. And she's carrying my chauffeur everywhere, everywhere, chauffeur. Yeah, it's just that some places they didn't allow us to enter with it. So we entered the parliament, the parliament, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And that's why we couldn't enter with it. But uh, hold your Bible everywhere. Instead of holding your phone and chatting and chatting, chatting nonsense, have your Bible. Read it. 
meditate it. We don't have time. The little time you get, make it useful for the kingdom of God. And when you're seated to your neighbor, speak to them about Jesus. Just find a way. Don't be grumpy, disappear in a phone and you can't talk. Smile, we give people a smile. That you can approach them and get them to Jesus, to talk to Jesus. We don't have time. Time is over. Speak to them. Because some of you, when you just walk, what will you do? You just pretend to be very busy, chatting, chatting. This is what the enemy has done to block us from communicating with other people. To block us. He has he dealt with our minds and we think maybe just being grumpy. Not If the word does not have love, it is our time now. But the Bible says in the end time, who grew that our love should grow hot. When we entered yesterday at the Bush Family Ministry, when we entered here, and when we were just worshiping and laid down, the Lord spoke to me concerning some things. The Lord spoke to me that we are entering, we are, we are in a season where terrible, great hard things, terrible situation, tough, perilous time that the world have never, the mankind, specifically used to the word the mankind have never experienced. And he also taught me a messless spirit has been poured on the hearts of men. That they become messless. We don't have time. And not only just having messless hearts. If they have messless hearts, that means now I'll advise you to focus more unto Jesus. If the word is being filled with a merciless spirit, then our hearts must be filled with mercy and compassion and love. Again, my daughter Paul used to tell me when sometimes you're being trained or told to sign out from the word. You don't sign out from the word, sign out how. Like when you're just going, you just focus on, on your mind, go far. You don't see what is happening. Because we were driving, I remember in Tanzania, and I had to ask that, do you see that sign? But she said, no, I will just sign up. If we sign out all of us, how are we going to talk to people? How are we going to share with them? The love of God. How are we going to win souls? I just want us, one, to be filled with love. Because if the word is being filled with merciless people, then it is us who has to be filled with love. Remember that. If the word is being filled with heartless people, then we have to be filled with heartful hearts. If there is scarcity and coldness of love in the word, then us as the church have to be hot, filled with the love. If the word does not want to communicate to anyone, this is now that we should stretch hands. Because that is also a, a, strat, a battle strategy. Being opposite to what the enemy is doing. When the enemy is full of hate, you will be filled with love. When the enemy wants people to be grumpy, you smile. When the enemy does not want you to forgive, it's time to forgive now. Well, it's time to forgive. So Acts 23. Acts 23 and verse 12. It's a story of Paul when he went back to Jerusalem and they wanted to kill him. 
And when they wanted to kill him, they this is what they said. When it was a day, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves under an, an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who formed this plot. They came to the chief priests and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a solemn oath to test nothing until we have killed Paul. The Spirit of God made me understand this. He was just talking to me now according to the situation. He said, the enemy have vowed. Number one, vowed to make sure he brings down our generation. To make sure that he brings down our generation. He has vowed. That boldness of someone coming into class and putting a flag and so forth, it means I don't care what happens. I don't care. Imagine how they can take risk for Satan. Can we take risk for Jesus? Can you take risk for Jesus? Can you vow and say, I will not sleep, I will not have peace, I will not settle until I've won so and so souls a month. One of the advantage of prayer work is that you get to communicate with people, you meet people, you talk to them about Jesus. If we put a plan like those who are walking, maybe, uh, he, okay, in Germany, you unite, you walk, and then you win souls. Uh, people in, okay, my, my, those, my daughters who are walking in New York, if you plan that when we're doing prayer walk, let's ev let everyone, every time we meet, maybe win one or two or three souls every walk that we walk. Do you think you're going to be there? It's going to turn to be a mighty move. When you walk, you win maybe every month, you're six, you're 10. Each one of you wins one, one, one soul or two, two souls. Okay, just one. Let's start with that. One soul every time you do a prayer walk, how many people are there? 20. You train them, you disciple them. When you meet another time, you add them to the group. Online, you do them. They pray, you pray, you send them the link. They join the live services and they're there. And then another time, you send them the link to the media. And they, if they are women, if they are men, you just send them the links for the services. They join, they learn, they grow in the Lord. We disciple them. Next month, you go other 20 people. Do you think you're going to be there? It's going to turn to be massive move. The problem that I'm seeing is that Christians are selfish. Very selfish. As long as I have Christ, it is okay. As long as I have Jesus, it is okay. Do you share that Jesus? Jesus didn't come to you, to your life, for you to remain with him, you just alone. He came to you that you can share him with other people. That you can share the news with other people. You can spread. The situation is not okay with the Western world. Okay, everywhere in the world. But the situation is not good. You see, sharing the gospel also comes with the, comes from communication. If we don't communicate, if we don't, don't become smart to come out with the strategies on how to win the souls, how to talk to people, how to approach them, then we are going to remain where we are. Praise the name of the living God. For three years, you are just being the same cycle. 
And if you increase cycle, it is the cycle of the born again. You don't expand outside to reach out other people and bring them to Jesus. Let me ask you, last month, how many people, how many souls did you win? You answer me there. How many people did you win? How many souls did you win last month? I just want to know, how many souls did you win last month? Please share. One, three, others. So just zero, at least one, one, three, zero. Are there others? None, none, zero. Keep on answering. None, 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 none. Okay. Now, let me ask you one question. None, 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 none. Now, let me ask you one thing. How does that salvation of you has helped the kingdom of God? Go unto the word and make people my disciples. That's the command. Let's, let me remind you this. Let's go. Let's look for it. Thank you, Joshua. Mark 16. May God just give you a hunger for the Bible. Just have a sweet, nice Bible. Whoever will, whoever will win 10 souls this month until we meet next month. Mark 16 from verse 14. Whoever will win... Ten. Okay. Whoever will win ten souls, not ten. Ten is okay. Ten Holy Spirit. Twelve. Each one for each tribe of Israelite. Whoever will win twelve souls, a gift. I'll give you my free book on prayer that is coming out very soon. Whoever will win 12 souls this month, from today to the next month, and make sure you take note of them. So when my book is out, I'll make sure I'll give you a gift. Even if you are old, then I'll give you. Praise God. That will be my gift to you. 16, Mark 16 from verse 14, it says, Afterward, he appeared to the 11 themselves, if they were reclining at the table and he approached them for their unbelief and hardness of the heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into the all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved 
shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who had believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in the new tongues. They will pick up serpents and they will drink any deadly poison to no harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Listen, before laying hands, before anything else, anything, else, the first commission that God gave us is to go and to empty the gospel. May the Lord release the hunger for the souls in your heart. In when you pray, when you pray, you do prayer work and so forth. What happens is you're breaking out of, you're breaking the yokes, the bondages that are holding people from coming to Jesus. Now, after breaking, win them now. Take them to Jesus. Talk to them. Bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus. And after that, start discipling them too, to love Jesus, to walk with Jesus, and also to train them too to pray, to do the prayer works again, and then to pray for others, and again, train them also to win other souls. That's how we are going to expand. You see what the strategy that the Muslims are doing to take over the nations? They are giving birth. Their strategy is giving birth to many children. That is their strategy. Give birth to as many children as you can. That's what they are doing. That's their move. And that's why you go to find a Muslim with one child. It's very hard. Five, six, nine, and they marry four wives. One wife, nine children. Four wives, nine times four is how many? How many? 36. One man, 36 children. If there are 10 Muslims in the, in the street, 36 times 10, 360. In a pace of 10 years to come. 10 years to come. Do you try, I was walking around the street of London and I'm, say, I'm telling them, they don't know what is coming. They don't know what is coming. In a short time, in 10 years to come, you'll find streets filled with the Muslims. Christians, they have only one child. If you ask them why, they'll tell you, I don't know what we ask. I don't know who came out with this family planning things. I'm sorry, but I'm not a follower of that. I don't know who came. When I went to Italy, what I saw, I said, something is wrong. You could see just old people. And even the young men that are there, they are gays. Young women that are, who are there, they are, uh, they are lesbians. That means there is no more increase. And what happens now, the migrants came in, the Islams. These old people, they will die. And what is going to be Italy later? A city of Islam instead of a Christian nation. We have got to know the tactics and techniques that the enemy is using to take over the world. To some places, they do that. To some places, they are winning souls through love. They are going out on the streets and winning, winning, the, winning the souls of the homeless and so forth, bringing them to them. What are the, are the Christians doing? You're riding, you're driving your cars with the window shield up, tinted. You don't want them to see them. You don't have that time. How can you talk with the homelessness? You're busy. Busy for what? When the kingdom is not even benefiting from your business. What is that salvation for? When heaven have not clapped a whole month, they didn't clap. Remember the Bible says there is celebration in heaven when one soul comes back to Jesus. Now, if heaven in heaven have not celebrated for a whole month, month you never made the heaven happy. You didn't bring joy to the heavens a whole month. Heavens are sad because of you. What is the benefit of that salvation to you? Now the enemy vowed to make sure that he is going to sleep neither slumber. 
until he has taken over our children, until he has taken over our cities, until he has taken over our daughters and our sons, until the church becomes dull and dull more than where we are now. It's time also for the church to vow and say, you know what? We are not going to eat. We'll be fasting. We'll be interceding. We'll be on the streets. We'll be doing so and so. I will not settle until I have 20 people to Jesus this month. I will not settle until I have walked and prayed in three or four cities. All that you think about is go to 60 cities and have a happy time, do vacation. That's what you're thinking about. What is Jesus gaining from your vacation? When you go to the vacation, you don't talk to anyone. You win no soul. What is that vacation gaining to the kingdom? What is it bringing to the kingdom of God? The enemy has vowed to take over our children, to destroy our generation. And us as women, we are the ones who are going to suffer. These are the fruits of our womb. Listen, whether you gave birth to them or what, as long as you're a Median woman, your mandate is to guard up after the children, to raise an army as Deborah's, to intercede for those, for the, for the generations, to raise an, an end time army that can go out as Miriam's, is to protect the children. How are you protecting them? I had people praying here. Just my daughter, my son, and this, that is, I'm sorry, but that is a selfish prayer. It shouldn't just be your children. Look around and see the children around how they're being. I was walking around going, we were going somewhere. And we just saw this young man, real, just littered on the street. And you can't go and approach somebody's again, child. That means even the parents are just taken over. I don't know, I just, I'm seeing like no one can say to anyone anything here. It's just me and my children and you can't even handle those children which are yours. You can't teach them. You can't even open your mouth to talk to them. You are afraid they'll run away. Who is going to teach our children? Who is going to train our children? Who is going to disciple? You can't, if you can't tell them, don't stand up, don't sit down. That means you can't even dare tell them, sit down, let's pray. You are afraid of your own fruit of the womb. And the enemy celebrates. He has won the battle. He won the battle. He has won everything. Can we rise up? and say enough is enough. Can we take over our children? Can we take over? I'm seeing careless. I don't know. I was walking in the cities of London in all words, what you see, you will rarely see the Londoners in the city of London at the key of the nation. We went in, inside the parliament when what we see, we saw it, it's a Christian prayer, declaring that that means the nation is a Christian nation, but at the key of the nation, at the gate of the nation. I was giving them the story of the king that welcomed people and he showed them everything. This is what the British have done opened the door and showing all the secrets, the powers to the enemy. What does it mean? In few years, the enemy will take over the nation. And it has shown in a Christian nation, a Hindu being a prime minister is scary. How did you let the enemy in? Now it's a Hindu. If we don't pray, a Muslim will take over the nation of British. A Hindu. 
being a prime minister in a Christian nation. You think it is okay? It is not okay. The enemy have sneaked in into your chambers. If he has an access to the parliament, to the prime minister's office, he has access to the to the palace. What does it mean? The nation is no longer in the hands. Can we rise up and pray? We opened the door. They opened the door. And he came. He conquered. He took over. Can we open our eyes and see that the enemy is smart? And which way did he use? He used the gate of economy. He used the gate of finances to take over British. That's what he did. He used money. He entered. He conquered. Where are the Christian businessmen, women and men that have been called? How can you speak in front of them? How can they listen to you? Where are the women who have been called in finance? Where are the women that have been called in power? Where are the women that have been called in political power? Where are the Deborahs? He told you who are those Deborah? A politician, a prominent woman, a prime minister. Where are the Deborahs? Can we rise up and take over the gates? The gates of finances, the gates of businesses, the political gates, the big influential gates. Can we take over the brass? Where are you? Did you read better about Deborah? Where are they? Where are the intercessors that God have called them to take over nations through prayers? And do we raise our children to be Deborahs of this current time? Are we raising one Deborah somewhere else? Or we are just raising bunches of cowards again? What we couldn't do? Are we raising someone who can rise up and be different to others? Are we raising them? That's my question. Are we raising other Deborahs, other Daniels, other Josephs? Are we raising other Davids? Are we raising them up? Or what are we raising? It's my prayer that whatever the enemy have vowed, vowed against you shall not come to pass in Jesus' name. Whatever the enemy vowed against the United Kingdom shall not come to pass in Jesus' name. And in US, whatever the enemy vowed against USA shall not come to pass in Jesus' name. Whatever the enemy vowed against Tanzania, against South Africa, against any nation, against Germany, shall not come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever the enemy vowed against your daughters and your sons shall not come to pass in Jesus' name. And we as media and women, we are vowing that in the mighty name of Jesus, we are going to take over in Jesus' name. Whatever the enemy vowed against Namibia, against Zimbabwe, against Germany, against Austria, against Switzerland, against Canada, against any nation, ah, he will not have it in Jesus' name. And we as media and women, if our husbands couldn't do it, if our mothers could not do it, if our fathers could not do it, we are rising up. We are taking over. We are taking over. We are playing the battle smartly. We are going to play this battle so smartly until we enter into palaces, until we enter into big places, until we take over all the gates. We are bringing it back. I wish I could stand 
somewhere and tell all the women, hey, come on, let's take over. Let's take over Nigeria back smartly. Smartly. You see, as Deborah's, we raise, we raise kings. If God have called you with a kingly anointing to be a prominent woman, to be a king into politics, into a, be, into a business, whatever God have called you to enter, contact me. Let me guide you. Because at first, I didn't understand why God did, did he have to take me into politics, into power. Why did he take me into that journey? Now I know. He took me there to raise other kings. I, I think by the grace of God, I know the strategies of how you can enter into powers. If you have that calling, just contact me. Let me raise you in that journey. Let me raise you in that journey. And we see you penetrate, you enter. We need them there. The British people, they were telling me the first day that he entered, the prime minister entered into the office. The first thing he did was to offer food to their God. I am a kotaya. It's my prayer that someone else will enter and sit there and offer sacrifices of prayer, of praises and offerings unto the living God. How are we going to do it? We have to create people to penetrate, to enter there. This is my prayer. Can you vow with me? Can you vow with us? With Dr. Liz, with Hisa Amutha, with I? With Prophet Sal, can we vow and say, us as Median women, we are going to do what other generations couldn't do. We are going to win souls like nobody's business. And we, can you write this one down? Georgia or whoever is here, or Stephanie or Doreen or Pauli, can you write it down? And we want a report. I really need the report. And I'm going to follow this up. Can we vow and say, oh, we are going to win souls. We are going to win countless souls. A year after now, we are going to present. Or after every six months, we're going to present it like to the man of God, like this is what we, we have done. In this month, in US, we want this much souls. In South Africa, this much. In Tanzania, this much. In UK, this much. In Nigeria, this much. In this, in Namibia, this much. In Canada, these are the souls we want. Can we go on and on and on? Can we have meetings and meet and encourage each other and go forward and conquer for the kingdom of God? Can we vow and say, enemy, we are vowing. One, we are taking back what you took from us. Two, we are conquering other nations. We are expanding. Third, we are you, we are going to guard our generations and say we are not going to have our generations. Fourth, we are going to take over and conquer and possess the gates of our enemies. Because you don't just vow, say, I'm going to protect. No, we are going to protect. We are going to take back what he took. We are going to protect what is in our hands now. And we are going to conquer and take what belongs to you, to enemy. Because that's what the Bible says. Your posterity shall possess the gates of their enemies. When God was telling Israel, take over the Canaan, what he did was to dispossess the enemy and possess it back. It's my prayer we vow. And I want to hear those reports. I want to hear people from New York telling me, and I've been thinking about you the last week, Telling him, ma'am, after the prayer walk, we won these souls. And these are other people that we are discipling them. We are going further and further and further. Praise God. You know what? Me, I'm ready. If you're three, you're four, you're five. And you tell me in my nation, we want us, we want to be trained. We want to be trained. I will come. Anyway, we will just come and disciple you in that nation and release you like fox with the fires. Go! Conquer them. Take them. Let's bring glory to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Let's pray for one. We have three minutes. Let's pray. I want you all to have the map of your nation. 
and the map of the world. Let's claim those territories. All of us, let's have a map of your nation and a map of the world. Let's claim the territories. Soon we'll start the school of intercession on how to possess the territories. And God, even through that, will go out when I just get back. But I, I want you to take, have the map, have it, and let's see how we can go forward and take over. Fill that church which you're attending. Fill it with people. Fill it until the pastor is frustrated. Where am I going to put those people? Win more souls. Fill that CMFI church until they say no. Bishop comes and says, where am I going to put these people? My God, my God, my God. Let them be frustrated. Give your pastor sleepless nights of where they are going to put people. Not sleepless nights of confusion and bragging. Fill that church. Don't wait for his attention and what. We are not doing for our pastors. We are not doing for anyone else. We are doing it for the kingdom of God. Hey, let's expand. Let's make this Median women to be a mighty move ever happened on the face of the earth. Praise the name of the living God. Are you ready to do that with us? Are you ready to do that with us? Let even Prophet Sadu himself be shocked and say, I didn't expect that it's going to be this way. That's my prayer. That's my desire. Let's go and have more. Let's fill Jesus' ministries with countless partners. Let him say, where are these coming from? Let's just go. Let's fill the churches with the glory of God. When we come in, let's pray and intercede mightily. When we go out, let's win more souls. When we come into our places of meeting, let's fill the places with prayer, with the sacrifices of prayers and, and, and worship and praises and the mighty testimonies. And let our pastors sleep at, do not sleep at night. How I see Bishop Fondong going around and that pastor of yours going around and being frustrated. Where am I going to put these people? Where am I going to put these people? That's my prayer. Stephanie is given details to the US map. And I want at the new house of prayer, the Lord told me to raise the flags of different nations. So if you have a flag of your nation, send it to me. You can send via DHL, an original flag of your nation. It's easy to get a map, but not a flag. If you can send more, both a map and a flag, it will be good. But a flag of your nation, original one, send it to me. Send it, we want to raise it, because that is the house of prayer for all nations. We want to pray seriously for all the nations. If you can bring it when you're, whatever, you can. And we will see the glory of God fill in the face of the earth. We are ready. I'm just crazy for Jesus. I'm just crazy. I want the kingdom of God to be glorified. Can we pray? First, let's pray for America. No, let's start with the United Kingdom because this is the current session. They pray for this nation. Let's pray for USA. Amen? Let's pray. What are you praying? Pray for the army to say enough is enough. We are taking back. We are reclaiming. We are protecting and we are expanding. Can you open, unlock your, unmute yourself and pray for three minutes. I'm <laughs> 
I want you to release the blood of Jesus over America in the streets of America. Release the blood of Jesus. My heart is bleeding. My heart is also bleeding for United Kingdom. My heart is also bleeding for America. Just plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Come on, plead the blood of Jesus. And over any nation that the word is laying the burden in your heart. Blood of Jesus. 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 Blood of Jesus of America. Blood of Jesus of America. Cleanse the nation. Cleanse the nation. Cleanse the nation. Cleanse the schools of America. Cleanse the schools. Blood of Jesus of the United Kingdom. Blood of Jesus of the United Kingdom. Blood of Blood Jesus of in the streets of United Kingdom, in the streets of America. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus over the sons, over the daughters, over our children in America, in United Kingdom. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Father, we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can Amen. we pray for this lastly? <coughs> Can we pray for Prophet Sadhu? He has got several ministries in Africa, in Togo, in Congo, and in Ghana. But as we all know, he just buried his mother on Saturday. And he's left, he's leaving to Congo and then will be in Togo. He's be in Togo, in Congo, and then in Ghana. Can we pray for his heart? Can we pray for his protection? Yes. Can we pray for the comfort, for the healing? He is a mighty prophet, but yet he is a man. And he is, that is the mother. Can we pray for his heart? Can we pray for his protection when, when he's going around Africa? All the nations that are go, he's going, especially Congo and Togo, they are strong nations, Togo, in the spirit. Can we pray for them, for, mm -hmm. for Dr. Liz, for the, Dr. Elizabeth Fondong, and for Bishop Robinson Fondong, for Pastor Debanjo, and everyone that is in the mission with them. Can we mm -hmm. pray for them? 
Father, we commit your servant, Prophet Sadhu. Yes, we commit him in your hands. Yes, the heavenly host go ahead of him. Clear the way in those messages. Clear the way in those messages. To pull down the strongholds. To fight and protect them. We plead the blood of Jesus with Congo. The blood of Jesus in Congo. The blood of Jesus in Ghana. Protection over your servants. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you and see you tomorrow. Praise God. As you keep on praying, keep on riding on this direction, when you come back tomorrow, bring whatever the Lord will speak to you concerning these nations and concerning the mission. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.